in a second. So, you know, it's, we have a whole team of guys that, that enjoy this stuff and help you out. And, you know, um, it takes a village to raise my children and it takes, you know, a village to put these together. So thanks to all those guys. Um, can you see just the main screen here? Yeah, we can. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, speaking of, um, thanks to uh, Jeff for helping me put this together again. Uh, thanks to the inspectors who sent pictures in. Uh, we're going to be looking at John Freudenberg from Silk Inspections. He's in Fayetteville, North Carolina. He's a trainee and, and a friend and um, does a lot of good work down there. So credit where credit is due there. And uh, as always, the clients and family members, you know, friends, mentors, trainers, trainees, and teammates who, who've helped us with this. Um, this is what I used to look like. Uh, I've <laughs> been told it needs to be updated. Uh, we're up to 44 trainees in North Carolina, which is really exciting. So thanks to Nachi for that. Um, our home inspection business is called Confident Home Inspection. Uh, and we have a commercial branch as well. If you'd like to check us out online at WB Trees Consultants, but they're all kind of interlinked. Um, as always, I think it's important to think about when you're studying anything, you know, are you sort of tapped into to, to learning? And if you're on this webinar, you certainly are. Um, but I just love to take a minute and still be amazed at homes <laughs> and at the natural world um, and still try to learn something on every home. Uh, I, I still learn stuff from um, all the guys I've trained. They were just texting each other and I'm just learning more and more stuff from these, these messages they send back and forth. Um, as far as standing outside and looking at the stars, you know, I'd hoped to look at the stars last night and I was at a friend's house and instead I heard coyotes howling in the wilderness. The sounded like ambulances circling me and that was a strange sense of wonder. Um, so I hope you, when you're not working or getting outside and, and spend time with your family and friends and, and really um, seeing how amazing this, this world is. Uh, guys, you know, as we get started, I'm really, I'm going to do some more in a sense, some more theory than last time, uh, but also a lot of pictures. Uh, inspection work is thinking work. You know, we're going to talk about how before you talk to a client and scare them or give them a repair or give them kind of your uh, synopsis of what's going on on the home, you're going to really want to think about it. Uh, so we would propose, you know, to first look at the history of a property. We're going to talk about, we're going to break all these down. First, look at the history of a property. What is this age? What are the renovations? What are, what's going on around it? Look at the current context, uh, like we talked about last time, particularly with moisture issues, with any evidence of other, other movement on the home. And then, you know, be ready to, to recommend a course of action to the client, but only after you've done the work to figure out what you think, you know, I got a quick question on the last webinar about a crack and I, I my friend told me I kind of hemmed and hawed and I guess, I think that's because you have to be on site to answer the question. <laughs> that's why we don't do inspections mostly by pictures. We can learn stuff from pictures, but we can't do an inspection based on photos. Um, so I, it's funny, my first trainer, I'd send him my, you know, you do this in your first few inspections, you send him a question, he goes, well, I'm not there. I can't, you know, this isn't an inspection, but if I was there, I would do this. And I've kind of followed the same pattern. I try to send it back to my, my students and say, look at this, look for this. Uh, so let's talk about history. You know, it's good. It took me a long time still learning this, but it's good to ask questions before we talk in a lot of situations. How old is the home? Have there been repairs or renovations? What does the owner or the occupant, if they're available, or if the agent's around, what are they saying? Try to, try to find out. What's going on in this home? Look at the current context. We're gonna investigate before we communicate. It's hard when somebody's on your shoulder, but um, we're gonna keep looking and asking questions. What is going on around the property? Um, those first two are the same, I apologize. What is the, <laughs> what is the grading like? 
Um, we're going to look at some, some pictures from last time too and talk about just other site concerns that you might see related to uh, these cracks that you're seeing. Um, look at the site around it, just diving in here to the history and the context. Um, this home is sitting downhill from the road. You know, it's, we're going to find out later there's standing water in the crawl space. You're certainly going to expect to find cracks. There are um, deferred maintenance items on the trim and on the roof on this particular home. They, uh, these things help you communicate with your clients, which we're going to get to at the end when we recommend a course of action, or maybe that would have been set, better said. Number three, communicate. Uh, the gutters are full here. They're pulling away from the home. Um, there's just a power line dangling through the yard. <laughs> so we got to understand the kind of property we're dealing with. This is not a brand new home. This has not been a well-kept home. Um, there's downspouts pouring out beside the foundation. There's standing, uh, or there's flat to negative grading on the side. There's more trim damage. There is a full sump pump that isn't operating. There is falling insulation in the crawl space. So then when we come to something like an, an really an open block here that looks like a crack, we're, we're kind of able to give the client some, some context to, to our observations. So we want to think thirdly that, you know, once we've done the thinking work, then we're going to communicate what we found. Uh, this, these notes are from, um, actually these principles are from How to Win Friends and Influence People, a famous book <laughs> from the 1930s, but it's really helped me with clients, right? Because clients are really worried when you uh, start to talk about foundation cracks. So, you know, when I wrote this um, web webinar proposal and, and we agreed on it, I thought this is really you know, it's half and half. It's really about investigation, but then it's about how do you talk to people? And, pe you know, some home buyers are so worried when they get into this home transaction. Uh, I remember an email one time I got that said, well, this and such and this and that happened right after we moved. And I said, oh boy, <laughs> this isn't about the home anymore. This is about a, a giant life change they went through. So try to understand that when you're communicating difficult things with clients. You know, I always try to say something good about the home, <laughs> even on that last one, <laughs> you know, whatever it is that I can genuinely appreciate, I'm not going to lie to them, but anything I can, anything I can say that really helps communicate that I like homes. I'm not here to destroy their home with words. There's so many, um, I feel like inspectors that are kind of warmongers toward homes. Um, not to name any names, but when you, <laughs> when you look at comments and when you interact with somebody on site, you want to get a good feeling about the home in general. I mean, occasionally, you know, depending on your municipality and your reasons and stuff, you might tell them to walk away, whatever. That's, you know, not always the best idea in North Carolina uh, where we are. But uh, I've done it a couple times in, in exceptional situations. But in general, generally speaking, it's good to appreciate the home. Um, this is, again, this is straight out of the book, but it's funny to apply it to homes. Make it seem easy to correct if it is, you know. If you really think it's a giant deal, then make that. But if your general rule is to be positive with your clients, um, they're going to be happy to work with you and they're going to be happy to hear from you. And they're going to, certainly they're going to trust you. And when you've done all this work, you're going to be able to say these things, um, in a way that they can listen to. So to, to summarize, we want to think clearly, investigate clearly about the home, be positive with our clients. And then when we give these recommendations, try to speak really uh, simply. So some example sort of repair items here. Uh, my most basic one I'll use, and we'll dive into some pictures. My most basic one I use if I don't think something's a big deal is monitor and repair as needed. After I've done all the work, I feel like it's not a big deal. I'm still gonna put it on the report because uh, I need to disclose it to the client. And it could, you know, we don't know the future. We have a lot of, dis Nachi has great, agreements we we copy them and use them you know, had a lawyer tell me we had the best agreements he's ever seen <laughs> and i was like well they're from internet so 
That's why, you know, we say, you know, you can't predict future conditions. You can't guarantee or warranty anything on the home. Um, I mean, there's so many disclaimers on those contracts. I've heard people say, well, what, what is this? <laughs> well, what is it you're doing? What we're doing is disclosing the current condition of the home to the client. So I would include uh, personally every crack I can visibly see or in the summary form and try to get as many pictures as I need to. And then still, so I've done the investigation, then I would still say, if it's my professional opinion, that it just needs to be monitored. That's what I would say. Kind of the next level of a comment would be consult with a structural engineer regarding needed repairs or something like for, you know, for repair. It might even be clearer. That's when, but again, I'm trying to be positive. That's when I'm telling them they've got to get, get with an engineer, but, or you could say contract an engineer for needed repairs. But I'm trying to be positive and move them along a path to fixing what needs to be fixed. Um, a different way to say that might be uh, repair as directed by structural engineer. That would just focus just on the repairs. So it's just three sample ways. There's libraries of comments out there, but those are just three easy ones to stick in your pocket. Um, and I will say when you have a template of these ideas and where you want to go with your comments, at least in your head, and you've done the research, you can kind of make your comments a little more cleanly when you've been doing this a, a while. Um, I heard a great quote, everything's hard till it gets easy. Everything's hard till it gets easy. So when, you, you know, when you're out there working hard and you're digging through these pieces of data and you're making these comments, it's going to get easier for you. Uh, and you're going to feel like you have a real body of knowledge to build on because you do. Uh, we talked last time about using your five senses because you've done the work. You know, I always say that we're professionals with dirty pants. We're, we're white, we white collar job with, with blue collar uh, overalls in the crawl space. Um, and that's, that kind of belies the, or it, uh, that's underneath that idea is that you've done the work and you're the one making the professional recommendation. Uh, quick case study, this is actually number one. Uh, this is obviously a commercial building, but I thought it was interesting. Um, if we were in class and I could interact with you, I would say, what is it that you can immediately identify about this building as far as the history? You know, the thing that jumps out to the eye is the, disc, is the two different colors of brick, at least two. Well, there's a thousand, but there's two main colors. <laughs> um, maybe secondly, you might notice that there's been some remortaring up at the top. You, you could notice that uh, there's a secondary building that's a little bit hard to see that's kind of coming off the left side there. Um, you could talk about a flat roof. You could, there's a lot of other things you could do, the cracked driveway. But I think the main thing is you know this wall has undergone some changes by looking at it. And then when you're walking around the site and you're seeing, even though it's a public walkway here, you're seeing cracked sidewalks, flat work um, in the commercial world. You're seeing, um, <laughs> you know, crawl space vents that are, <laughs> that are um, held, you know, that are supported with or, or blocked rather with bricks, which is a, not a practice I've seen before. Um, and some of them are broken out. Then you get up closer to the brick and you, you can see that the, there's mortar missing, you know, there's chips out of the brick, they're rounded off. It's just a very, it's a hundred year old building. So these are contextual things you're learning as you go through this, as you go through this property and it helps you explain some things to your client. Uh, so on this one, you know, we would say, you know, this is a very short summary just from some of the pictures. We would say there's deferred maintenance throughout. We would say that the bricks are going to need repair. They've already been repaired. That's something that's obvious, but we're, again, we're contextualizing for the client what's going on here. Um, we would note, we would note here that there had been, uh, when we got inside, there had been some flood damage. So again, you know, these sorts of things are going to help you make sense of, of, of what you're seeing on site. Let's look at, we're going we're gonna to crack open a folder here um, to, uh, to look at. Um, so let me pull that up. And 
many thanks to my friend John for making these pictures available. He did, uh, like I said, he does great work down in Fayetteville with these kind of things. So I'm going to share those. Let me say off the top real quick. He does a really, um, he does a really smart job. You guys can see all that. Yeah, Good, we can see. Okay, we can see that sidewalk as they crack in it. Yep. Yep. So you know he does a really smart thing here. I guess you can see my cursor now too, which is nice. Yes. Um, yep. Noting uh, where this was, the time and date, and his company on every picture. Nice. Uh, really smart. Um, there's an app that does that for him, and I. Failed to know the name off the top of my head, but but check that out. That's really really smart. I think now he even has his logo on most of them. Uh, as we go, as we're going through these pictures, I just want you to notice uh, you're having, you know, you're having settling here. You're having, you know, just some odd brick marks through here where it looks like there was again not being on site. This looks like a repair or moisture, but you would get up there and check that out. This brick has curled right here. He's measuring the risers as he goes around. Again, he's gathering data. Uh, they're a little, little high. That, that they're high now, and and pro, you know, probably have settled. You'd, you'd you'd check down here, and and see. It looks like they've released from. Looks like the tread has come loose from the riser and and possibly settled. Prob possibly the whole pad settled. Uh, but he's getting high risers all the way around, he's getting brick damage. Who knows how that even happened, but he's, <laughs> he's gathering this data as, as he goes. There's an, there's an open in between the foundation wall and the pad there. So then when he begins to encounter these cracks in the brick, and I don't know if there's a facade or structural brick here, you'd have to be on site. But again, you'd be doing that work and, you know, trying to process this. You're investigating and you're trying to collate and organize the information for your client in a way that makes sense to them. Because um, again, our work is, is, is for clients. It's, it's where we get hired. There's another crack here. It looks like near, near an exterior door and underneath some kind of eave that runs that steps down and sort of finds its way over to the door. Another great shot of a crack here by a doorway. Um, who knows what's going on with this pad right here and why it looks like dirt right up against a, a threshold. <laughs> a little blurry debris in the garage looks like probably termite damage in our area. And you know, you gotta know your area. In the south, there's a lot of termite issues. Uh, that are going to associate with moisture. I think we talked a little bit about that last time. Some moisture damage to the sheathing here, um, possibly a back deck issue. Now he's taking uh, moisture readings of the block. I would highly, highly recommend for $40 a pinless moisture meter. Um, pinned moisture meters like only work in crawl spaces and attics. Everywhere else that you have an issue, you're pretty much going to need a pin list. So this has a plate on the back. It's not very readable in the shop, but on site, it, it reads just fine. Um, there's a plate in the back. Test it out. Test it on different kinds of surfaces. Try to learn how it works, and it'll, it'll help you when you have these moisture issues. That being said, I'm going to guess, looking at the pictures already, the moisture issues are, are you know, pretty, pretty well visible otherwise. So he's going right up to this block and you can see, I can't read the number. It looks like it's a hundred. <laughs> can't quite tell, but I can tell that the red, uh, the, the, the meter has gone from green to yellow to red, which means stop. It also means stop in moisture. It means stop pouring water through this wall. Uh, and, and lo and behold, you have a, a running crack down the wall. Okay. Efflorescence. 
Um, I love it when people call it fluorescence or effervescence. Um, it's such a fun word. Efflorescence through the wall looks like some opening in the <laughs> in the mortar joints. Um, don't know if there's any uh, any shifting here. You'd have to be on site to tell, but occasionally we've seen some lateral shifting going on at that kind of location. Again, another shot of that crack. It's wide here, it gets smaller at the bottom, but you're still gonna note it in your report. Yeah, it looks like, so from another shot, it's a little blurry, but um, you, it looks like you got a couple of horizontal cracks now. So now you're a bit more concerned if, you, if this is in order. I mean, I think they are. Uh, but again, you're still at the data gathering stage. Those bottom blocks are pretty dark. So you're, you're beginning to associate this and put together some context. You're finding growth and damage, and it looks like a prior repair now. I mean, then, you know, <laughs> then you, you've merged history with, with present, and you're seeing there's been now a, a past issue of moisture damage to this home. Uh, I always note uh, prior repairs. Noting prior repairs is a CYA item. Um, it's certainly beyond the scope, but you know, if you don't want your client to think that you're a doofus, <laughs> write down that you crawled past a drop girder. You know, drop girder is present um, in rear center of crawl space. Consult owner concerning prior repairs. Put the onus back on the client to talk, to put the onus back on the owner to find that out, what's going on there. And say that you saw it. Because if you don't, the next time somebody goes in there, they're like, oh, your home inspector should have said, it's like, hey, I wrote it down. So make sure you note those kind of things when you crawl past it. Um, again, this would be like a can't miss kind of wood damage item. It looks like it's to the sill plate in the band there. It's hard to tell from the shot. Um, that one's a little blurry. These look like some of these have, have been prior repairs, certainly from the earlier one. If you're doing the plumbing class, you would know that that's polybutylene. Not gonna. Hey, Brett. Yep. Uh, I see uh, somebody yep. raising their hand. So yeah. I just need to recommend uh, tell everybody that if you're watching this live, you know, mm -hmm. you can ask questions using the question and answer button down there. Uh, if you raise your hand, I don't know what that means. So if you ever, <laughs> uh, just uh, type in your question there, or if you're uh, watching this on YouTube, go ahead and type your question there. So I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, bro. Thank you. So, um, yeah, and just let me know if I need to go back. I'll be happy to do that. Again, some either wall sheathing or just the, yeah, that's wall sheathing, but occasionally you'll even see the, the exposed siding, I think, in some of these areas. Uh, anytime you have this, I call it fiberboard uh, substance, it's not fiber cement. I mean, this looks like corrugated or sort of beaded board. Um, or it's a little bit meshy. I'm having a hard time describing it, but anytime you see it, it just falls apart when it gets wet. Mm. I mean, he's still going in this crawl space. If you're watching the time here, <laughs> you know, he, again, this is the kind of work that you want to do to make your comments. You know, I, I think I was saying in class the other week to my last set of trainees, I was saying, you know, the danger with the home inspection is people think that you take $400, whatever your fee is, and you walk through the home in 20 minutes and you write a report. These are the kind of observations that keep, you, number one, your integrity. Number two, the integrity of your report and, and the value of it uh, high. Because he's now spending, I mean, I think if we go back, I wonder when he started in this crawl space. This is not even a point I was really <laughs> honestly planning on making, but this is, ama you know, this is amazing. We started in there at around 10 o'clock. <laughs> so, and we're not even at the end of the pictures yet. 
Uh, I see that. I see that Q. I can actually see that Q and A now, Ben. I, now I'm curious how long he's in this space, and it looks like it might be a combo between a crawl and a. But I mean, it goes on and on and on till. Well, some of these are at nine, so he might have even been there earlier. I mean, this is, this is um incredible work, John. Let me click back on this. Uh, should I take that question now, Ben? Sure. Anytime you want. Okay. Um. Oh, <laughs> we have our photographer no noting in. I thought That's you right. were on, I thought you were you had a one o'clock, John. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was <laughs> he said he was given a heads up by these issues from a tenant who was complaining about the steps in the walkway. Yeah, no wonder. So the tenant told him, and we that's funny because we talked about it last time. You ask the people on site. Um, I'm <laughs> you ask the people on site. Uh, what's going on here uh we were doing um uh, jeff and i were doing a commercial one for a retail space we walk in you know we walk into the managers and we go hey what's going on what, how do you feel about the hvac and they don't know really who sent us they don't really have a dog in the fight they go well half of them don't work <laughs> i looked at jeff and go the inspection is kind of over we're going to go verify that <laughs> but they're the ones that are here all the time they know the people that live in the space and work in the space know the most about the property. You just need to go verify it with observations. Uh, it's a simple 80, 20 principle. You know, they, they are the 80, uh, these people that are using it and living in it all the time. They know what's going on intuitively in, in general terms. You know, some people don't care, but people that are around it and using it and care about it, they they know what's going on. So, you know, John was given this note before he got out there. Um, he says also the foundation wall was deteriorated at the bottom and it bowed out, but it was hard to photograph. That's true. Stuff that moves, um, la like third dimension is hard, tends to be really hard to photograph. You kind of have to get to the side and if it's in a dark space, you want to use your flashlight to draw that out, but even still use an arrow in your app or something to draw it out, but it's still hard to do. You can say it. I always say, make your comments in words as though the picture is not there um, because your picture may not get translated when the, when the report gets passed around. It might just be words. So make sure you give the location and the observation verbally in addition to the picture. The picture is just supplementary to your note. Um, he, sa he also says, not pictured, is uh, there were no gutters on the roof. So where you had a, and I think we talked about this a little bit in the last webinar, <laughs> it's not surprising that the roof probably joined somewhere, uh, yep, near the front porch and walkway. Uh, so the tenant complained for years. Good thing we can't see the address. Good. <laughs> tenant complained for years. So the, uh, the property manager never addressed it. And you know, there's good, you know, there's folks that are, will do it and folks that won't in that field, uh, just like any field. And then over the years, it resulted in $90,000 worth of damage. $90,000 worth of damage. Hey, Brett, I wonder if John could, uh, by text or, you know, I could open up his microphone yeah. if I wanted mm -hmm. to share um, yeah, that I'd app love or that, that yeah. feature that puts the date uh, timestamp yeah. on the photos. Yeah, he, 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 it sounds like he's listening in. I actually asked him if he wanted to, to jump in just to, for this property part of it. Um, and he said he had that one o'clock, but um, yeah. he can probably send us that app or we can, um, I can see, I could text him right now. Because that's a really great point. Yeah. He went back and looked at his starting point. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That is an investment of your time, That's but it's well worth it. I mean, that is incredible value. To well, to gather and you that. know, yeah, and maybe you've had, you know, there's one in a thousand clients that'll say, I don't think you did an inspection on this house. Yeah. And you're like, what? I spent, you know, I spent three to four hours and I took a hundred pictures and you, then you can hand them the time and date stamp photos. You know, you don't want to just inspect for those type of clients, but it does protect you and, you know, and, and, you know, slander about your business and your practice. So these kind of things are like, he was in the crawl space at this time on this day. 
Uh, looks like we got a couple questions here. Um, first one, are there particular types of concrete or masonry, masonry crack patterns that must be reported versus, I thought that was V's for a second, like a V pattern. I think that's versus what may not necessarily be much of a concern. If so, what are the best practice in terms of observation and documentation? I got to say, I don't know about crack patterns. I mean, that's something that, does Nachi have some resources on that, Ben? We actually do. We have uh, some really good resources and I can um, uh, offer my email, uh, yeah. ben at internachi.org and uh, I'll direct you to those resources. Awesome. But the uh, ones that are go diagonal are a concern, mm -hmm. for, you know, when it goes diagonal, you know, the vertical ones um, are also concerned, but the ones that go at, the, at a diagonal, they're mm -hmm. showing some kind of movement and failure underneath. It's kind of pointing almost to the problem area. Mm -hmm. And then if it causes displacement and opening of the crack, then yep. we're, we're towards a structural engineer recommendation. Yeah, and lateral movement we talked about. I was thinking of bigger patterns like multiple cracks, but yeah, the diagonal stuff, and we talked about lateral movement. So have a friend's house where the wall has moved like an eighth of an inch into a basement. And I'm like, hey man, that's what concerns me here. Uh, because that means there's this high, there is this hydrostatic pressure from flat and negative grading at the front wall that's pushed over it for many years. And then when a general contractor, former owner, installs metal straps to hold it in place, <laughs> I'm concerned that, it, that there's a danger of movement there. So you, again, we're looking at the context and the history of the property there. Um, John just texted in. Uh, the name of that app is Timestamp Camera for Android, and I don't know if it's available on iPhone or not, but Timestamp Camera for Android. Um, we can put that um, in the comments as well. Uh, Timestamp Camera for Android. So you just put your logo, your name, and it does the rest. Nice. Uh, I'm not sure I'm familiar with this, um, this third one. Would the inspector suggest the Proven app? I'm not familiar with that one. It's another uh, photo app. Okay. I haven't used it. Okay. Awesome. Well, I'll keep this over on my second screen, um, bring that over. I think we were, uh, we were around here. I think we were around this damage. Yep. Okay. Good. Thanks for those guys. Keep them, keep them coming in. I think we try to simulate. I mean, I think we all want to be together, right? That's the best classroom experience. So this is really good for, for um, getting closer and closer to that. Uh, so it looks like, uh, I'm actually not sure, uh, this damage is probably on this little, um, some people call that, a, I mean, it's sort of a half wall, it's a cripple, some people might call it a stem wall, I'm not, I'm not sure the, the technical name there, um, but it looks like damage to those different joints in the wall. like a different location but still some you can kind of see that the the darker part of the wood is up up top but i mean it's crumb i mean it looks like um it looks like that uh like peanut brittle stuff or maple candy when it crumbles like this uh pest inspector once told me it's called brown cubicle rot uh and it just turns into little cubes uh that's another one of those cannot miss kind of items when you're in a, a foundation space or really any space. Uh, watermarks running down the wall. So he's still in there at 1119. <laughs> this is a different crack that looks bigger than the other one. More moisture marks. This maybe this was kind of a combination basement crawl space at this point. Um, missing vent up here. Some kind of marks here. There may even be moisture at the mortar joints at that location. So I mean, you're really getting a full picture here of what's going on. 
more moisture coming through the wall. I'd have to ask him. I wonder, looks like he might not go back to the property. If this is the same one, or maybe this is multiple ones. Um, yeah, I mean, let's back up. There's obviously, that's a giant brace. They, <laughs> so they've had to install some kind of steel I-beam bracing to this wall to keep it from moving. Apparently the outside problem was not repaired, but this was, and we talked about last time, you know, you can find these Band-Aid type fixes that don't address the source of the issue. But, but again, you're doing the thinking work, you're doing the investigation and you're figuring out uh, how to explain that to the, the client. Um, Brad wrote in, Bradley King, checkmate inspections, Boone, North Carolina, five census inspector training graduate, friend, confidant, says, uh, <laughs> how do you comment on bracing and previous repair in the report? How do you comment on bracing and previous repair in the report? Uh, let's look at same one, but just to get a better view of it. Uh, I would say, uh, I'd love to hear what Ben would say as well, but I'd say uh, bracing is visible in blank location of crawl space or basement, whatever it is. So I like to give the location, say it's visible. Uh, if you want to connect it to what's going on outside and what you think the source is, there's a pro and a con if you want to connect it. If you do connect it, that connection can get questioned. If you don't, you're just making an observation from inside, but maybe the client in your writing won't understand the connection. I like to, I try to avoid making the connection in the comment and make it verbally to them um, or make it location wise in the report. Cause I don't want the whole defect issue question cause of a connection that's in the report. But I think there's a pro and a con there. And I think you have to make a professional decision as to how you're gonna go with that. Some people were just gonna go all out. Hey, it's this, it's that. And if you have all that information, you do it. But if you're not, you know, if you're not sure, I think on this one, we're pretty sure it's, it's connected to this drainage issue outside. Um, so uh, structural bracing is visible in crawl space, in front right corner of crawl space, okay? Uh, you could say that this, this may be connected to drainage issues outside, but I'm definitely gonna say consult owner, consult occupant or consult property manager concerning previous, I might say leakage and repairs in this case, because we know there's a moisture issue outside. Is that, that's very wordy, but when you're working through it, you're gonna clean that up. What would you say there, Ben? Yeah, whenever I come across something that's over my head, oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> you know, I just say, uh, you know, like what you just said, I'm asking for the report. So I would tell my client to ask the homeowner or the, the home seller or somebody um, else uh, about what is going on here. Who installed mm -hmm. it, when, why, and was there a structural engineer involved, and where's the copy of the report? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, reference previous report even or previous documentation on repairs. And that, that's a, the other issue that you were touching on previously. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to tell your client to do something. Um, I'm not going to uh, write a report for the building owner, right, to mm -hmm. give more information. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell my client to do that. I'm yeah. recommending my client to get more information. Yeah, and, and I, you know... <clears throat> Clients don't understand this, but their, their liability is in one sense raised when they get a home inspection. <laughs> they, they feel like it's, you know, they feel like it's better because they know more and that's true also, but it's also true that they should have homework when they're done. You know, they, they should have more information and, and more knowledge of what to do with the home moving forward when they're done. You know, we had a trainee who uh, somebody said, didn't do a good job, whatever, whatever, had, a, had an inspector come after him 100 days later and write up some of the same issues that he wrote up on the pre-purchase. The lady moved in and said there were still problems. Well, the second inspector finding stuff that the first inspector found just means that the client didn't do what they were supposed to do to the home. It only proves that he was right and it wasn't taken care of. 
So, you know, when we give stuff to clients, you know, they don't always know, but it's, it's raising their liability in the sense of their knowledge base and they're now supposed to take care of this stuff. So, you know, our recommendation to him was just, hey, you know, point out you already, you already explained this and, you know, they didn't take care of it, and, you know, as kindly as possible. Um, we got another question. Uh, yeah, and, and to, our, to our point about the bracing, uh, John says he did ask for invoices for the work uh, on that brace and anything from the structural engineer. So that's wise. V very specific, very thorough uh, recommendation there. Glenn, Glenn Bronner asks, if your client is a preservation company, how, I might need more information on that. I'm going to read it, but I might, I'm not sure if I know what you mean by preservation company. Uh, how would you be able to, if possible, obtain more information on the property since you're not dealing with the owner directly? What does preservation company mean there? Right. I, I didn't understand that, but yeah. I think it's to the issue of just who do you go to, to find mm -hmm. more information. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'm going to assume your client's in touch with the owner. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, I mean, that's similar to a buyer, I think. Yep. I'd have, yeah, maybe that's a more, you know, sort of um, stylized answer if there's a specific situation. I don't, I don't know the name of that preservation company. Sorry, Glenn. I mean, like, what are they, what are they doing? The preservation company, are they a property manager? I think that's the question. Um. assuming he's he's listening but um we can we can catch that one in a second sure yeah. so there's a nice lateral shot of that brace uh really showing the scope of it um again it's hard to see you can't see the inside and the outside in the same shot but this is likely that same walkway area seems like it uh more water intrusion, water damage, more shots of the brace. Uh, yeah, I've wondered if I went backwards a little bit. There's a repaired crack that's had some diagonal movement, not a ton maybe, but certainly moved. There's another movement and moisture evidence. Um, another lateral shot of that property. Um, so we go back now, you know, he's got 30 or so pictures of, <laughs> of the issues in this crawl space. Uh, six, that row has a little bit more, a little more than 30. Um, and, the, and again, the stuff that we, that we looked at is now going to be, you're going to try to collate and give that information to the clients. Um, I would, I would say as simply and clearly as you can. And that's going to be the, the issue with something like this. So if you're clear thinking and you have a process when you, you know, when you get there, you're able to sort of collate this information and, and organize in a way that your clients can use. Cause that's really the end goal. You know, we don't deliver them photo banks. We deliver them reports. And reports are your observations with your knowledge communicated back to the client. Um, to go back to that question, uh, <laughs> thanks for searching that, Anthony. Um, yeah, I think it still applies. Uh, so it says that the preservation property would have been bank-owned and, and keep uh, – no, they take on bank-owned properties and make sure they stay up to date for maintenance and repairs. Um, that's all client side communication that we're not going to get involved in. <laughs> I always tell clients like, I'm not coming to your negotiating table. My report is. So, you know, pass that to the client and let them work that out. Um, you don't want to, you don't want to get entangled in any of that stuff that you don't need to. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, and there may be other, other questions, but you know, trust your client to, to try to track that down and get, and you tell them what the next step would be. I think that's as far as I would go with it. 
Uh, then I'm going to stop this share and just, and just wrap this up on a couple of um, slides here. I think we're, I think we're done. Awesome. Yeah. So we just got a, just got a couple of things over here um, that I'll share. Yep. Good. Um, just to review, this is similar to last time, but a little bit different for the, for the uh, foundation crack. Study the history of the property. Talk to the occupants. Look at what's going on around the home, the present context. N note those connections to moisture. It's very similar to what we saw last time. When often when there's grading and moisture issues, there's foundation cracking. Um, it's not a coincidence. They're related. Pay close attention to moisture. Use your senses. You go into a space and it smells musty because it, it is. Figure, you know, try to track down how that's happening uh, and communicate positively, positively as much as you can and clearly. Um, you know, you don't always have to say this could cause ninety thousand dollars of damage. I mean, some cases it will, and maybe some there are times to say that, but. Generally, most of the cracks that we see in our area are fairly, relatively small. We still disclose them to clients and tell them to keep an eye on them because it's their property to monitor, not ours. Um, uh, th those connections, just like last time, the roof, the grading. Uh, last time we talked about floodplains. Uh, exterior and interior drainage, interior of a, of a crawl space that is, and any moist, visible moisture on foundation walls, uh, crawl space floors, uh, outside walkways, indoor floors. And uh, yeah, just any questions, guys? So we'll take a look. We'll give everybody just a few more yeah. seconds to yeah. ask another question. Awesome. But I really appreciate it. Um, again, if anybody wanted to get more information about uh, structural problems and cracks and concrete uh, problems, there was um, a newsletter, an InterNACHI uh, Home Inspector newsletter that just went out, uh, maybe a previous issue. And uh, there was an article about um, how to identify cracks. And we also had a, um, an engineer, a structural engineer from Florida, and he was talking about cracks and concrete. Um, he was also talking about roofs blown off because he was down in Florida. Uh, they have roofs that blow off down there, but they also have mm -hmm. cracking concrete um, and uh, shoring the, the structure up because the, the settlement is too much. So if you need any additional information, feel free to email me, Ben and Internachi. And uh, where do we find Five Senses Inspector Training? Yeah, What's the, yeah. What's the website? Where do we go yeah. to want hands-on stuff? Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you know, I said, uh, I said in a recent training, I said, when I, whoops, when I, uh, when I present, I should just, uh, I should just fix things when they need to be fixed. So, <laughs> so I'll fix that. Um, good. Um, you can see that you can see how the sausage gets made a little bit. Uh, our website. <laughs> there you go. Type it. Yeah. yeah. We have a dot training website. Nice. Um, so that's HTTP five senses inspector dot training. There that, you go. Um, that's awesome. So, uh, we're based in Raleigh, North Carolina. We have done sessions in other locales. Uh, we have um, an on-site commercial training coming up in June. Um, we do rotating field trainings for home inspectors as well. Uh, when people contact me about mentoring, um, give them a call, see what they need. Often, you know, they just want some camaraderie, uh, some friendship in the business, some people to talk to. Because if you're not careful, you know, home inspection can be a really lonely business. Um, so I'd encourage you to find somebody in your area that you can 